to slightly start over. Art Manion, CERT Coordination Center. Um, we are CERT.org. We are one of the, possibly the first C-CERT ever. Uh, I live on the planet Earth, Carnegie Mellon University, Software Engineering Institute. There's a long, uh, a long, long number of things I have to say to get it all correct. Um, I work for, for the, I manage the vulnerability analysis team at CERT. We deal with software vulnerabilities all the time. We're software vulnerability nerds. Uh, talking after Pete, there's a piece of risk that software vulnerabilities, that's the piece I focus on. That's actually a lot of what this talk is about. Um, keep in mind that it's a piece of risk, and that's one of my complaints uh, with CVSS that I'm gonna, gonna be getting into today. Um, roughly two parts of this talk. Uh, people use CVSS base scores. Uh, I'm going to claim that they are horribly wrong and you should not use them. Um, I'm going to do that with a bit of uh, you know, a bit of concern. I'm, I'm involved in the CVSS development group. I'm in the SIG. I've been working on it for quite some time. So I feel bad complaining about it, but I'm going to. And my justification is I'm trying to help at the same time. So it's not just complaining, I'm complaining and trying to make things better. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize to that group probably tomorrow, though. So, uh, right, trying to make it better. Okay. Um, I'm old enough to have seen this movie in junior high. Some of you might be as well. It wasn't particularly good, but for some reason when I wrote up the CFP for this, the, 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 the thing popped into my head. Um, the identity crisis theme from the movie is actually a little bit relevant. Uh, CVSS, people want to know, we want to make a better risk decision, right? I got a bunch of vulnerabilities, that's part of my risk equation. Which ones do I worry about sooner or later, first, second, how bad are they going to be? Uh, it'd be great if that were free information from a reliable source like NIST NVD. Um, what we get, though, from CVSS base is sort of the immediate, direct, proximate impact and severity of the vulnerability. Um, and you get numbers. And that number is nice because it reduces complexity to a number. It's also bad because humans see a number and then they're like, hey, it's seven, and stop thinking about sort of what, what went into that and you've just decided and made your decision at that point. <clears throat> uh, to, be, to be fair, some vendors are providing some temporal environment scores, which we'll get into in a minute, so um, it's not always just the, the portable base. Well, I've got a cool thing here. See, I put the CVSS logo and um, you know what, free, free base scores from NIST NVD, great, good enough. I've got numbers, I've got data, I'm going with that. No reason to think much harder about it. <sighs> um, are folks familiar with CVSS generally? Is anybody horribly not? Okay. Brief history, around 2004 it probably started. Um, some folks from Cisco were kind of behind, the individuals behind uh, a lot of the original work. Um, transition to first. Uh, version 2 in 20, 2007, version 3 fairly recently is out. I don't like version 3, I'll get into that. Um, most of the development for CVSS has been large kind of enterprise commercial software vendors uh, who get, their, their vulnerabilities are scored with CVSS, so they clearly have a, a, a care about how they're, how they're scored. Uh, vulnerability management and scan, vuln scanning vendors. Uh, and some vuln database people, uh, CERT included, um, OSVDB is now sort of risk-based securities, VulnDB, uh, NVD folks are involved, NIST folks are involved there. Uh, very quick overview, there are three groups of vectors. Um, uh, there's the base group, which is about the vulnerability, inherent characteristic, characteristics of the vulnerability. Temporal metric is trying to measure sort of threat, what has changed over time, exploitation up or down, patch availability up or down, confidence in the, in the report. And environmental um, is, you know, we all have the same, we're all affected by the same flash vulnerability, but your environment is different than mine. Environmental is trying to measure that. It, it got much worse in V3. Uh, so, <clears throat> severity is, you know, I'm, I'm using some dictionary terms here to try to s sort this out a bit. Severity is sort of the intensity, the seriousness of something. Uh, and se severity of a vulnerability is not severity of risk. They are not the same thing, very important. Um, priority is what you do first or second. Uh, and risk, you know, I don't have to say much since Pete just talked, but there's a risk equation. I use loss instead of impact here. Um, but uh, when I think about the, sort, of, sort of the risk factors, what are the biggest of those three terms? I'm a vulnerability nerd, so I think about vulnerabilities all the time. I would suggest loss, maybe threat, are the biggest, the most sort of influential terms in that equation. If no one's attacking you, do whatever you want, you're fine, right? If you have nothing to lose, you, you're, you've got very little, little risk. 
you might put threat first in our, in our space. Um, I, I went with loss, you know, and the idea that the catastrophic loss could put you completely out of business, cost lives, cause physical damage. Uh, so that's, that's the, the higher factor in my mind. The least influential fact term in there, I think, is, is probably vulnerability. And yet that's what you're getting with CVSS base scores. Uh, you, get, you get CVSS base. CVSS temporal is about threat a little bit, but it got worse. It's, it's, not, it's not good, I'll say. I call it broken. And environmental went away with V3. Um, so <coughs> we're, not, we're not doing well. Uh, this is my one, I think, second good meme. I, right around the holiday break when I, uh, I saw the, 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 the CFP for this talk come out, I think I had been on a CVSS call like, probably the day before. I was still mad 24 hours later from that phone call. Uh, and this was the, what else popped into my head? We were, the, this happens in standards development, right? You, you're, you're narrow, you're focused on, the, four, on the, the trees, the small part of the problem. We're talking in circles about backwards compatibility, all these things, and completely avoid the big picture discussion, which is what, what really kind of matters and what we're, what we're missing. <sighs> Target distribution, right? Um, how many things are in my environment that are vulnerable or how many users are affected by this thing? Uh, I'm gonna say critical environmental metric gone in version three. Um, I complained a little bit, but you know, that's, that's what happened. Uh, CVSS takes the vectors and turns them into a number, and there's some math. Uh, the way this math was developed is the experts scored a bunch of vulnerabilities, <coughs> expert system, that's fine, sort of ranked them into, in severity, and that's generally okay. Uh, had some smart folks, much smarter than me, figure out some math that would make the, you know, the computation sort of match what the experts did. That's, that's sort of all okay. Um, but you get some really weird weights in there just to kind of make things fit. Uh, what I'm going to pick on is, you know, 0 0.94. Shouldn't that have been 0 0.93, 0 0.95? Doesn't matter in the least. Um, this precision, I'm, I'm going to suggest, is just not, not necessary. In fact, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a guess, and it's kind of to shoehorn math into reality, um, and not a great, not a great plan. Um, I think I've sorted this out, but it, it seemed as if there was an expected distribution that CVSS scores should be, should be a normal distribution or should be evenly distributed. Uh, and that, if you don't know what, you're, what, what, they, what real vol severity looks like, you can't really make up, a, you know, make up the numbers to fit it. Um, scope change in version three. There's a reason for this. The idea is I attack something and I get access to something else or I impact something else. Fine in theory. Uh, the examples are cross-site scripting. I exploit a vulnerability on a web page, but the user I'm targeting is who, you know, their browser gets attacked. Uh, VM escape is maybe a little more direct uh, um, uh, example. Um, there were issues, version two assumed the, the operating system is the, is the only thing you're after. Um, uh, Oracle, for instance, had a great complaint about this. An Oracle database on an operating system. If I can own the database, who cares about the operating system? Oh, I didn't get root. Oh, fine. I have all of your database, so it doesn't really matter. CVSS v2 didn't cover that well. Scope was an attempt to do that. It's difficult. It's awkward. It's hard to explain. Uh, and the real question, I, I haven't looked at this yet, is um, does, that, does that scope metric and the value it, it brings, does that mean anything to the overall decision in the first place? Uh, I think it's too soon to tell. We need probably some more data to, to figure that out. Uh, I talked about threat being broken. Exploit code maturity, the weight, uh, the, the value for the metric of high, so if there's a worm going around, autonomous code, lots of exploitation, it's a 1.0. If you don't know what the exploit uh, activity is, it's also a 1.0. So this is inverted in my mind. If every vulnerability was exploited heavily, Sure, this, this would make sense. There are, uh, how, many, how many vulnerabilities publicly disclosed in a year? Anybody know? Anybody counting? Want to guess? Somebody guess. How many? Yeah, 12, 14, did you say? I say 14, because risk-based security counts 14, which is higher than CVE and NVD in case you're counting and it matters to you. Um, are, does, does anybody, you know? So uh, yes, this is, this, is, this is conservative, so that's fine, right? I, I don't know, I'll assume the worst case scenario. The problem is you have 14,000 a year. You assume the worst case scenario on all of them? We, we certainly do not, because I'm not running around 
you know, we worry about 100 a year, tens, dozens, really, really worry about them. Uh, we don't worry about the PHP golf that's a 10 or any of those things, right? So another issue, and this happens with all standards development, is sort of the backwards compatibility discussion. Uh, but this, this is just backwards to me. Um, Dan Guido, I think it's now NCC Group, has a presentation from several years ago about exploit intelligence. Basically, he takes vulnerabilities for 2010 or something, and he says if you didn't, have, if you couldn't patch, but you, you know, blocked Flash and turned off Java and did a couple of things, you block all the exploit activity for the year, without patching anything. And he's got, you know, pretty good logic on that. Uh, there's a couple of papers uh, by a couple of uh, Italian guys, Alodi and Masaki. I spelled that wrong. Um, who basically they look at sort of can CVSS predict uh, exploit activity for anything? Uh, and the answer is generally no. Uh, and furthermore, they go on to say, you know, if, if, you, if you actually had a policy that said CVSS high, I patch within, you know, 10 days or three days or five days, you're investing badly um, because you're patching a bunch of stuff that is not being attacked and is not that severe. Um, so it can't predict, it can't predict attacks very well. Um, there's, a, there's a current sort of discussion going on where uh, um, you've got different platforms and it's hard for CVSS to sort of be scored per, per, on a per platform basis. <sighs> the V3 way it deals with environmental scores might help here because environmental in V3 is just the base scores run for a different sort of environment. Um, but <coughs> this one's not, not well resolved yet. What I want to stop for a minute on is the... Um, Right. Anyway, the exploit code maturity and the non-predicting of attacks, it can't actually, it can't predict the negative either. It can't predict that it won't be attacked. So you get no information either direction out of it. This is basically the slide that supports the, my claim that the, the threat part of it is just worthless. It's just broken completely. Yes? Uh, so their, their, their papers look at the NIST, the NIST NVD scores, so it's base only, which is, it's lacking the temporal, which might be a lack of data, because no one's, no one's providing those in bulk and they didn't go score them by hand or do anything like that. So there may be a data problem there, because they didn't, they, one of the things I would like to do, uh, CERT scores full environmental, but not for very many vulnerabilities. We score base, temporal, and environment. I would love to do their analysis on the full scores. That might address the one question about is there data missing. But from what they found, they were just they were com complete misses. Doesn't, doesn't correlate anything, doesn't predict anything. Um, bad, bad sensitivity, bad specificity, just almost, almost nothing. Uh, yes, sorry. Oh. Anyone know this one off the top of your head? We're vulnerability nerds, CVE, you know, heart bleed, yes. Um, this is a little bit cheating, but I'm gonna, it, it, it does illustrate some CVSS issues. The base score is a five. The immediate direct impact, right, the proximate impact is I can leak bits of information. I have a partial confidentiality breach, right? Okay, real world risk, right? I can read your secret TLS keys and then impersonate your website and sign things and break crypto. So it's horrible. Um, the full score in version two, if I dialed all the dials as best I could without cheating, I got it to a 6.4. Uh, and that's by claiming that uh, the confidentiality and integrity requirements of OpenSSL, a crypto library, are high. It should always be, we're well, trusting it to be confident and integrity, integritous, and when it's not, it's a bad, it's a bad, um, bad failure. Um, so I could sort, you can sort of tweak it with environmental. Uh, V3 helped with this. Um, instead of partial and complete for the uh, impact scores, they went with a uh, high, medium, low, none, I think, so you can say high and basically accommodate uh, a heart bleed like case. So I, I mentioned this, but let me make it more clear, make it, more, make it a more clear point. Um, at CERT, we don't publish every vulnerability. We don't keep up with NVD or the, the vuln databases. I looked, this is uh, 20, 2012, 13, 14 CVEs that CERT published and NVD published. And we, we do, our analysts do a full environmental score with CVSS v2. So, this distribution on the left is um, actually 
80,000 CVSS base scores, uh, and you get, uh, let's see, high is blue, so you get a third high, a bunch of medium, and a small amount of low, right? For the, for the sample set I used, the 2012, 2013, 2014 vulnerabilities, <coughs> NVD base looks like this, so not, not much, not, not dissimilar, and the CERT base looks like this, so, you know, CERT is not scoring the same as NVD, we usually make mistakes and they yell at us to correct it, and we, we, we try to do better, but um, we're not scoring exactly the same way here. So these are, this is base-only distributions, and they're, they're pretty, whether you cover everything or a sample set, they look similar. When you, when you add the temporal score in, it changes like this, and when you add full environmental for V2, it looks like this. So, you know, an 8% eight, eight, eight high, that feels about right. I don't run around worrying about every vulnerability I see every day, 14,000 a year, I don't know how many a day that is, but it's a lot a day, right? Um, so this is my you know, picture version of real world distribution, what you get with CVSS base. And again, the, the real issue here is the misuse of CVSS base for something that it's not able to give you. It's not that CVSS is inherently completely wrong or broken, although a couple of places it could be better, it's, the, it's the, mis, the presumptive misuse of it that I'm truly trying to, to complain about here. Uh, so all that complaining, can, can we do any better? So what are we trying to do? This is this conference about defense. I'm gonna do vulnerability information because that's what I know for defense. Um, we wanna make a better risk decision, right? Do I patch? Do I get insurance? Do I buy an add-on product? Do I stop using something, right? Uh, am I gonna get hit? And, and I sort of mentioned earlier that the risk factors, the, the, the importance of risk factors, threat and loss are much higher than vulnerability, I think. Um, and I, I, I think day to day I feel like threat's the most kind of important, meaningful one. So am I gonna get hit by something? Are other, other people getting hit by it? If my neighbors are getting hit, it's probably coming my way, right? Um, how, how bad's it gonna be when it gets me? This is my loss. And the narrow impact, the, the heart bleed, leaking information is, inf is, is, is inf it's, that's, that's, that's fun for vulnerability nerds like me trying to catalog and keep track of things, but that's not as interesting as the overall sort of problem, right? Open SSLs everywhere, target distribution, we'll count that, and the, you know, the, the second order consequence is it gets your, it breaks your TLS everywhere. Um, CVSS base provides the things you don't need that much. The, the proximate severity and the proximate impact of the vulnerability. Um, InfoSec, right, we have, we have missing and incomplete information all the time. Um, a colleague of mine came, found, stumbled across a couple of cool acronyms a week or two ago. I don't know if folks have heard these yet, but uh, the second one I really like, those words, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, if you stop and think about them or go read the paper, they're, they're distinct problems with information, right? It's a kind of a way to break down um, the world we try to make decisions in here. So we're making risk decisions with, with uncertainty, big time. Uh, and the suggestion is, and e even, if this goes even beyond what CVSS is trying to do, find smaller, smaller questions that, that require you to gather less information or less precise information. Um, focus on the things that are the higher, the higher influence on your equation, so threat and loss. Um, and if information is not helping you, don't spend any energy, dollars, money, time trying to get it. Even though it's available, if it's not helping you, don't use it. So I'm gonna run through a handful of, none of these are solutions by any means, but these are ideas uh, that, that I have noticed or had or a CERT has looked at over the years uh, to try to, to do these sort of heuristic, um, you know, functional but not super precise, not very detailed, not very costly vulnerability severity or risk severity sort of estimates. Uh, one concept is triage. Uh, if you ever work in a, if you work in SOCs or you know, handle incidents, uh, handle cases. You're probably familiar with this term in, in the in InfoSec world. Cases come in, they get a first pass. Uh, and you can classify things very quickly. Uh, this is actually stolen from sort of health, and I think, I think in, around World War I, it became sort of a popular, well, popular. <sighs> to, triage, to, to classify wounded folks, the idea was, you know, this person with attention could be saved, this person's a goner, and this person can, has a broken leg and can wait. So it's classifying very important things for a very high priority next, very next step. Um, the, the thing that CERT really normally does and what I'd recommend in general is you do a triage pass which what's coming in first and you do a second pass for severity later on when you have more information. 
Uh, right, depending on the results of the triage, you might want to do something else, um, either waiting for someone else to come up with information you can use, or spending time finding it yourself can give you a better decision uh, after you've made the first sort of classification. Um, folks are familiar with uh, CIA, um, <coughs> confidentiality, integrity, availability. There's a guy named Don Parker with two N's who adds three more to this. Um, interesting, because I like to say Parkerian hexad, but also, you know, we're, we're focused on CIA a lot. Uh, this, this thinks about some other, some other, fec, uh, other um, sort of vectors that might play into uh, impact or severity. Um, possession is I've stolen the laptop. I may not have taken anything off it yet. It might be encrypted, but I don't have the laptop anymore. So it's out of my possession. Uh, that gets the utility a little bit as well. Um, I can't use something I don't, I don't have in my hands anymore. Or if my security broke the thing, I locked myself out. I've, I have a loss. You know, I have, I have a loss there, but it's not that someone stole the data, it's just that I now can't get it because I tried to be too secure. Uh, authenticity, I have to keep reading why that's not the same as integrity when I go read the, um, the page on, on Parkerian Hexad, but again, the idea being you don't have to be uh, stuck with CIA if that's not sufficient for your needs. Another uh, medical, another steal from the medical world, are folks familiar with the APGAR score? Okay, there's a woman named Virginia APGAR, uh, a doctor who came up with this score. It's basically sort of triage. A newborn uh, is scored on, there's a backronym for uh, what they're looking at in her name, uh, appearance, pulse, grimace, response to being poked, uh, activity, and how they're breathing. And this is done immediately at birth, and it's done usually five minutes later and sometimes other intervals. And typically, the baby gets better, and that's a good sign. Again, this is sort of a triage. It's meant to catch, catch problems early. If the APGAR score doesn't improve, you know you've got a problem. So um, yeah, no reason to reinvent it. We'll just steal this and make one for vulnerability severity. Uh, this was a point in time at which these were some of the things CERT thought we cared about in our sort of APGAR. Our decision was whether to accept the case for coordination or not. A bunch of people ask us for help disclosing. Um, we do not take all the requests because we're small and can't work on all of them. Sorry, did you have a question? Or were you waving me down? Five minutes, okay. All right. Um, yeah, kind of the kinds of things we worry about uh, when we're deciding whether or not to take on a case. You can make up your own. At plus one, plus two, minus one, a couple of little numbers, uh, add them up and, and you'll get something. Uh, the Microsoft Exploitability Index. Specifically, they, they say this right on the page, um, they're providing additional information to help you evaluate your risk and they're providing their guess as to the likelihood of being exploited. So they're telling you threat probability, right, for the, whatever bulletin just came out and, and that you're worried about. It's not your whole risk assessment, but it's threat information, and it's, and it's just that. It doesn't need to be super precise. They have four categories, and one is, you know, one is 100% yes, one's 100%, or sorry, one is yes, it's being exploited, it's proven, and the rest sort of back off from there. That's the level of granularity that probably you'd need to do anything useful. Um, some years ago, uh, I spent some work, did a project at CERT, that we called this vulnerability response decision assistance. Uh, I used to call it an expert system or decision support system. In reading about those two things, there's a difference. I don't quite understand what the difference is. Don't particularly care. The issue for this project was that it required a lot of upfront time. Um, someone, someone choosing to use it had to decide what actions they wanted to take. This won't give you a score. This tells you that you should or should not publish an advisory, should or should not patch, should or should not, in, in CERT's case, um, you know, accept, accept for coordination or not, or perform certain activity, or perform a certain publication. So you have to tell it in advance what, you, what, your, what your actions might be, and you have to train it. You have to train it ahead of time. Um, so it's an ex expert, and you, you have to put in the training data, have experts put down the answers, and then you spin the thing up and let it run. Uh, this shaded area means that the, the the machine's guess was off by you know, zero or one from what the human analyst said. So we were trying to you know, reproduce human experts here in a computer, got reasonably close, um, but those concepts might be something useful. Uh, the system we built is not around and was probably over, overly cantankerous, uh, but the ideas are still something you might want to consider. Um, another option for CVSS, um, this is distribution of ba the base score counts. <coughs> So there's a whole lot of 7.5, there's a whole lot of um, 4.3 is cross-site scripting, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure what 5 turns out to be. It might be local, pr local privilege escalation. 
7.5. Uh, oh, wait, I do have notes here. Um, 7.5 is probably unauthent unauthenticated remote access, but only partial, like a user compromise remotely. 4.3 is cross-site scripting. So I, I don't know the best way to bucket this, but instead of having the math on CVSS, it might be sufficient to map combinations of vectors to the high, medium, low directly, or to some specific thing you're looking for, and uh, kind of do away with the, the fancy math part of it. Uh, so, and then to, fall, to finish up, I've got two more uh, pointers here. Uh, CW, not V, SS, from MITRE, because it starts with C and ends in has three or four letters in it. Um, I, I have to imagine that, that, that MITRE and probably Steve Christie didn't like CVSS when it started and went, literally went off and wrote their own. Uh, I think that's actually what happened. Um, Steve Christie's name's on this, so I'm allowed to, allowed to say that. Uh, there's the CW, CWSS. It looks a lot like CVSS if you, if you squint, right? Three different vectors combined to a score. The score is from 0 to 100. It has weights and values like CVSS. Um, it's kind of like Betamax and VHS. Nobody looked at this, and it didn't, didn't quite make it. Uh, on my list of many things to do is evaluate this, compare with CVSS scores. Have not done it. But it exists. You can take a look at it. MITRE went one step further and does this thing. Common Weakness Risk Analysis Framework. The acronym is unpronounceable. CRAF. Um, basically, based on this picture, I can tell you it's too much trouble. It's just too, it's too complicated, right? 14,000 a year, you don't need to run this on all of them, right? Um, anyway, quick summary, CVSS has issues. Base scores particularly have issues. Horrible threat information, horrible environment information, and those are the two things that are your, more important in your risk decision than what you do get from CVSS base. Uh, a handful of things to sort of help maybe point people in a better direction. Um, no answers, but those are the ways to think about it. Smaller questions, more heuristic. Um, uh, don't need a lot of information. Low precision is OK, but something, and, and maybe something you can repeat uh, over time and then measure yourself. Whew. OK, questions. <coughs> more questions. Yes, sir. Something that is too expensive to go fix, even if you have the resources, that you just should take offline and throw away, like you have in the medical field. Yeah, so uh, I think so. I mean, that's you know, a, a, an answer can be stop using this thing, right? Or you know, take it, take it down. Um, that should be a consideration. I don't know if that's you know something you want the, the triage analyst doing. It's probably like a corporate, you know, organizational level decision. But that should absolutely be an answer. Uh, you had a slide that said. Removing accounts, removing ports, removing devices lowers your risk. Yeah, lowers your exposure, absolutely. Uh, with regard to your Parkerian hexad, uh -huh. Don and I got into some major pissing matches oh, geez. <laughs> about 30 years ago. Yeah. And my argument to him was that his three additional elements were, in fact, sub elements of the existing triad, and that as we add more complexities to our analysis of whatever aspect of network security we're in, everything does fit inside of additional layered triads versus creating a hexad, which is basically unstable when it's scaled out. And I'd like your comments on that as to whether I'm full of shit or he is. So, you know. <laughs> His, history, yeah. history would indicate that CIA's pretty good because a lot of people use that and you have to go hunt for Parkerian Hexad to, to find out. So na nature may have chosen CIA. I mean, I just said this. I, can, I, cannot, I cannot differentiate integrity and authenticity well without reading carefully, convincing myself for five minutes and then forgetting again why they're, why they're different. Um, you know, possession and utility seem pretty similar. So I, I, I will say I don't personally put a lot of value in the, 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 the three extra ones. You could easily argue that they're, they're already covered pretty well, and they might be good enough. Um, my point in, in, in showing this is, in case you're feeling constrained by CIA, you can't add stuff, and you know, Don went and did that. So, yeah. Does it, you know, I, I'd argue with you on the point. I, mean, I think the base metrics do a good job of scoring the affordability. But the problem, yep. the problem that we're going to have, and it's something that we've struggled
struggle with the CBSS signature now is the fact that we don't know the environment that the probability is in. So yeah. it's up to the consuming shop to be able to, you know, they're, they're the ones that are going to have to do that next step and go, right, right. where's this at in my mind? Let, let, me, let me restate that because that's important. Uh, and it, it also you know, backs off my complaining a little bit. The idea with CBSS is the, you know, the, the person scoring base, the vendor who knows the vulnerability of the whole database or NIST, knows that part of the information, they've looked at the analysis, they can give you a decent score for that. And it's fine for that. My complaint is that, one of my complaints is that users go and don't do the other steps. They don't add temporal, they don't add environmental, they go off and use the base and take some action. I'm warning everyone not to do that. You're horribly off base if you do that. Hey, free numbers, I'm good. No, 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 no. Free input, do something else and then you're good. The do something else part is really important. I, I, I have this sense people just skip that entirely. Um, so there's that part. I do have beef about uh, uh, exploit maturity being inverted, and I do have beef about uh, target distribution. I, I think environment, the environment measurement got worse with three. I think it just did. I tried some exercises to score v3. I couldn't change my environmental score by, by changing the base metrics. It didn't, it didn't affect it. They do that next part of the analysis, but it's very, very important for a person receiving that to do that next part of the steps. Yes, absolutely. That, that, that's that's point number one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you.